Hello, I'm Hannah Sachs, executive editor of NEJM Evidence, and this is StatStat. You're hard at work conducting a study that examines the rates of flood damage based on how far people live from the ocean. You decide to compare the rates of insurance claims from a seaside neighborhood with those from a neighborhood a little farther from the shore. You track the insurance claims that are filed for almost three years. And you're shocked by your results. People living farther away from the coast were actually more likely to file an insurance claim for flood damage. How could this have happened? Is everything you thought you knew about the risk of flooding wrong? Of course not. There were just some real problems with how you set up your study. One major issue. You didn't count for an important competing risk. In this case, the chance that during the study period, homeowners fortified their houses to protect against flood damage. Why would that matter? What do we mean by competing risk? Let's take a closer look. Suppose that, like you, many participants in the study population recognized that climate change has increased the chance of flooding by the coast. So many people who lived by the water decided to do major construction and erect stilts for their home. In fact, of the 50 households in the the by-the-sea group when you started, more than three-quarters of them converted to stilts during the study period. When a big storm came, this made all the difference, and just seven of 50 by-the-sea households had flood damage and filed a claim. By comparison, of the 50 households in the the away-from-the-sea group, just one erected stilts. And after the big storm, nine homeowners filed claims for flood damage. In this case, whether people converted their homes to stilts dramatically changed the risk of flooding. No analogy is perfect, but this same issue, that the occurrence of one event can prevent or change the likelihood of the occurrence of another, comes up in research all the time. When events compete with each other to produce the outcome of interest, they're known as competing events. The probability of one of these events occurring among the other potential competing events is known as a competing risk. Let's look at a couple examples of competing events in clinical trials. A patient can die from cancer or from a heart attack, but cannot die from both. Therefore, a clinical trial of a cancer treatment in which the primary outcome is death from cancer needs to account for the competing risk of death from other causes. Or consider whether people with osteoarthritis of the knee have pain is of course affected by whether they've undergone a knee replacement. Therefore, a clinical trial evaluating a medication for knee pain from osteoarthritis, in which the primary outcome is a pain score at one year, needs to account for the competing risk that participants in the trial underwent a knee replacement during the study period. You can imagine that in these examples, accounting for competing events is crucial. In fact, not accounting for competing risks typically leads to an overestimation of the probability of the outcome. So, how do we account for these competing events? Competing risk analysis typically uses a mathematical model, such as the cumulative incidence function, to estimate the probability of one event, say death from cancer, while accounting for the probability of other events, say death from other causes, that preclude the possibility of that first event. We won't get into more details now, but the key message is to be on the lookout for competing events when you're evaluating a clinical trial or study. And as far as your study of floods is concerned, it's time to get back to the drawing board before the next big storm.